Try this example. First, we redraw the original picture. Now we modify. We always ask for every arrow, where are the electrons coming from? Where are the electrons going to? Well, where are the electrons coming from? Well, you can see that the tail of this arrow is on the pi bond. You can see this is a different pattern than the examples that we've been doing for the last few minutes. Now we've moved on to a different pattern. Now the tail of the arrow is on the pi bond. So where are the electrons coming from? The electrons are coming from the pi bond. So we should erase the pi bond because the electrons aren't going to be there anymore. Well, who lost the electrons on the pi bond? This carbon here lost those electrons. So this carbon should become more positive. Now where are the electrons going to? Well, that's indicated by the head of the arrow. Notice that the head of this arrow is on the atom. The head of this arrow is on the oxygen atom. That indicates that the electrons are going to a lone pair. So these electrons are going to become a lone pair. Um, however, remember that uh, at this point, we're usually not going to draw the lone pairs. Uh, we don't have to draw this lone pair because we can indicate it by the negative formal charge that the oxygen is going to get. Remember that we're usually not drawing lone pairs anymore. Uh, well, we're not going to draw this lone pair, but we are going to indicate the change in this oxygen's charge. And then we can erase this arrow. And now, anybody who understands formal charges should be able to see that this oxygen has three lone pairs, and this oxygen has only two lone pairs. We shouldn't have to draw in the lone pairs because it's expected that we know enough about formal charges that if we see an oxygen with no formal charge, we should know without, we should know automatically that there's two lone pairs without the lone pairs being shown. And we should know that this oxygen has three lone pairs because it has a negative formal charge. We shouldn't have to see the lone pairs. By the way, that's something that you need to work on on your own then. You need to be able to look at an oxygen and see how many lone pairs there are just from the formal charge even if the lone pairs are not shown. Your instructor is going to expect that you can do that as your OCHEM class proceeds. Well, you can see that now we have a different type of arrow than what we've been working on previously. Previously, we learned about arrows uh, where the electrons were coming from a lone pair and going to a pi bond. But now we have kind of the reverse. The electrons were coming from the pi bond and going to a lone pair. So this is a new type of arrow that's different from the previous examples where the electrons are coming from a pi bond and going to a lone pair. How do we indicate that electrons are coming from a pi bond? Well, we put the tail of the arrow on the pi bond. And how do we indicate that electrons are going to a lone pair? We put the head of the arrow on the atom. And then remember that you don't actually have to draw in the lone pair. You just put the correct formal charge in and people are expected to know how many lone pairs there are. Once again, the whole reason for doing this is to get the charges right. So let me introduce a way to double check whether you're getting the charges right. Um, we should have the same total charge in our starting picture as in our ending picture because we have conservation of charge. The overall charge of the molecule isn't changing. Remember that both of these resonance structures represent the same molecule. Both of these resonance structures represent the same molecule, so they have to have the same amount of charge. Well, what was the net charge in the left-hand case? The net charge in the left-hand case was obviously just zero, because there was no charges at all. What was the net charge in the right-hand resonance structure? Well, we have a positive formal charge, and we have a negative formal charge. So the net charge is zero. Well, that confirms that we got the problem correct. The net charge that you start with has to be the net charge that you end with. If they're different, you know you've made a mistake. So from this point on in the videos, I'm going to try to remember, after I've drawn the new resonance structure, to always check the net charges and make sure that the net charges are the same in both pictures. That's just a way of double checking our work. Of course, if you've used the electron pushing arrows correctly, technically it's not necessary to check the net charges because if you've used the electron pushing arrows correctly, you should already have gotten the correct charge. 
But because, because people often make mistakes at that, however, a good way to double check yourself is to always check the net charge. So I strongly recommend that for all the examples that you're doing while you're watching the videos, you should always, after you draw the resonance structure, check the net charges and make sure the net charges are the same for all of your structures. Now, eventually, hopefully, you're going to get so much mastery of this material that it's not necessary for you to always check the net charges. But again, I'm assuming at this point that you're finding the material to be difficult. Well, as long as you're finding this material difficult, a great, uh, a great way to catch your mistakes and make sure you're getting the charges correct is to always calculate the net charge of the initial resonance structure and the net charge of the new resonance structure and make sure that they have the same net charge. If they have different net charges, you know you made a mistake. Try to draw the resonance structure suggested by this electron pushing arrow. Redraw the original picture. And now we're going to make modifications. Where are the electrons coming from? Well, the tail is on the pi bond. So the electrons are coming from the pi bond. So we'll erase the pi bond. And we immediately deal with the charges. This carbon lost the electrons in the pi bond, so it's becoming more positive. Where are the electrons going to? Well, the head of the arrow is on this nitrogen. So the electrons are going to a lone pair. Now we know, again, that conventionally we usually don't draw a lone pair, so I'm not going to bother to draw the lone pair. However, I do have to show that this nitrogen, since it gained the lone pair, is now more negative than it used to be. And now anybody who knows about formal charges should be able to see that this nitrogen has one lone pair and this nitrogen has two lone pairs. You should already know that a nitrogen with no formal charge has one lone pair you should know that a nitrogen with no formal charge has one lone pair. If you didn't know that, you should make a flashcard of that because your instructor expects that you're familiar with that idea. So a nitrogen with a negative charge has an extra lone pair. This nitrogen has two lone pairs. There was no need to draw the other lone pair. It wouldn't really be wrong to draw that lone pair, but it's just it, people usually don't do that. Now remember that our new technique is to always make sure that the net charge is balanced. What was the net charge in our left-hand structure? Zero. There were no formal charges. What was the net charge in our right-hand structure? Well, there was a negative one charge and a positive one charge, so the net charge is zero. The net charges are the same. That confirms that we got this correct.